we are live with some incredible video people all doing very, very different things in the industry. And um, I am so excited to bring this to you. We are literally live. So if you have any questions at all about the Village Cinematic Award, we would love for you to ask because uh, our guests are here to share a whole lot of information with you and to inspire you to get your entries in and try something new so I'm just going to swing over here to our guests so hey give them a wave everyone so we've got Bruce Moyle, Peter John and Courtney Holmes here with us tonight so thank you so much guys for joining us tonight really really appreciate it um, now I am going to begin the evening by Getting a, giving a little bit of a perspective on who you all are. So I've got a little reel from each of you, a, a short uh, snippet that's about 60 seconds long, which is the length of the entry. So it'll give you, you guys a good idea of what sort of thing could be entered. And then I'm gonna get each of these guys to share a bit about themselves. So we're gonna head over to Bruce Moyle's reel first. So here we go. <laughs> That was fantastic. Thank you so much for putting that together. Thanks. Oh, <laughs> now, happy to be yeah. here. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was absolutely. very short and sweet. <laughs> no, it wasn't. That, and that's kind of where we're at with this award, actually. So it's uh, it's important that we show that. We've got a few uh, people already online, um, so I'm just going to pop them up on screen. So Adam Wagstaff says, hey. Hey, Adam. <laughs> Kat Ferguson, evening. Megan, hi. So yeah, guys, if you've got a question, just um, make sure you jump in and ask away. But Bruce, let's hear a little bit about yourself and um, where, you, where you're coming from, particularly on the video side of things. Oh, okay, yep. Uh, well, I'm a filmmaker based in uh, Tasmania, Launceston up north. Um, I've been working in the industry for about 20 years, doing everything you can imagine, but more more than anything i've been working in corporate industrial um, advertising and bits of pieces and education of late actually a lot of educational work um so and i've worked the gamut from small business here locally all the way through to the internationals like netflix and everybody else so i've sort of done my time everywhere and yeah and i, and I enjoy the variety of work and the, and the people you meet and the different things you get to see yeah, yeah. It, it it sounds like yeah, you've you've had such a wide background and I know even with the photography side of things, you know, you're really great at all aspects, which um I think will make an excellent um when when you judge just gives you a really bre good breadth of what you can share because so, you're looking at it from so many different angles. Um, now we're going to get into talking a bit more about what you guys are looking for as a judge. So we will um, we will talk with everyone about that. But I am going to go next to Peter John's demo. Uh, so over to Peter John's. Here we go. Peter. 
Peter John. Welcome all the way from the Sunshine Coast. How are you going? <laughs> I'm great. It's sunny, it's warm, and it's the best place to be. <laughs> uh, apparently. So uh, a little heads up, guys. Peter is my brother, in case you uh, can't see the resemblance. I'm sure there's a little bit there, although he is much more tanned <laughs> than I am being that is from up in the Sunshine Coast. So, Peter, share a little bit about your background. Obviously, I know it, well, but let everyone else. Yes, yes. For 25 years, I've been predominantly working in the music industry, doing filmmaking and playing in a band. I shifted after 10 years and went to solely into directing music videos. And so I've done 120-something. I don't know the exact number, but 120-something to date. Uh, and I've travelled the world with some of the world's best artists and had a blast doing it and I'm still doing it. Built a studio on the Sunshine Coast when everything shut down during COVID so I could create more cool things. And now everything's coming back. I'm very excited and I'm also very excited to be a part of this and finding out some new filmmakers and some talents out there. Yeah, absolutely. And we're really, really thankful um, to have you coming down um, to judge and to give these guys some great feedback. I mean, that's what it's all about. You know, it's not it's not just about winning, although there's some big prizes, but it's definitely about no, it's always winning. about winning. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that discussion. So I'm going to go over now to Courtney's video and then we'll hear a little bit about Courtney Holmes. Thanks, Pete. I dream about you catching lots of fish. Courtney, thank you so much oh. for sharing that. <laughs> now, I have a feeling that probably uh, a lot of people already know who you are, um, <laughs> but how about you share a little about yourself, where you've come from, and um, what it is that you do? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm originally from the US. I've been living in Australia for about on going on 17 years now. Um, I started as a photographer, and then I got a lot of encouragement to start just switching over to video. I knew that my video, my camera had video functionality and that was a really big part of my life growing up. My dad always shot video of us as kids. So I started doing that and then I just absolutely fell in love with it. I have a background in music, um, studied music at university and uh, just the combination of video footage and music is just everything that my heart loves. So, um, from there, I started doing that for families and grew that into a pretty successful business now. And um, I work with other photographers, teaching them how to do a very similar thing in their own unique, creative way um, through Filming Life Academy. So, yeah. And um, we, we've worked together a few times in the past, uh, yes. which has been really, really wonderful. You've um, you've helped with a lot of the heart projects that we've yeah. um, we've done, so that's been amazing. And the work that you've done for the heart project is just incredible. Um, so yeah, we we love you, Courtney. You've um, you inspire many, many people. Um, one of the things I just wanted to draw attention to um, is the very, very generous prize that you are providing as part of this uh, for the winner. Can you just share a little bit about what your Filming Life Academy lifetime membership would give them? Yeah, for sure. So the Filming Life Academy is really designed for photographers that are wanting to learn how to switch over to video. And I introduce all of the fundamentals and the concepts in a really easy to understand way from kind of the perspective of a photographer. Um, so sort of just building on the things that you already know, using the gear that you already have, 
just trying to make it as simple as possible so that you can just get started right away. And also just sort of to strip back a lot of the technical kind of scary jargon that you can sometimes hear with video and um, just make it a little bit more simple. And so the lifetime membership gets you access to all of the courses that are a part of the academy. We also have a network um, so the Filming Life Network, which is our community and it's super supportive. And um, within that, we also have the Art House Showcase, which is a um, every two months we run a theme. So just encouraging you to continue shooting, creating. We showcase those um, films on our blog and um, share them with everyone as well. And um, so give, so that um, membership gives you access to everything including uh, monthly critiques from me, monthly business mentoring calls with me, um, and just like heaps more um, in terms of community involvement. We've got small groups, we've got, um, you know, just different kinds of mentoring opportunities and um, with the Art House Showcase and blog features and all of that kind of thing. Just really great um, way to sort of network and especially when you're starting out and you're doing something new like this, it can be very isolating, it can be, um, you can sort of start to feel a little bit lonely, like you're not sure who to ask questions to. And this is just um, that one place where you can be sure that you're going to get your questions answered and get really supportive feedback as well from people. Yeah, that's uh, that's amazing, Courtney. And um, for whoever wins it, I know they're going to get so much out of that. I think we've got probably a lot of photographers out there that are in that space like they're, they're just mm. starting out with video um, and and they want to go further and so this is just an incredible prize I'm going to jump back over to all of us uh, it's my everyone um, scene there we go so everyone here uh, so and that plus Peter John you're offering some mentoring so a two-hour mentor mentoring session do you want to share with people Peter about what that might entail and you know what what someone might get out of that well it's so broad you can get a lot of things but I want to kind of tailor it to uh, whoever wins what they actually hmm. want in a lot of information but what, what I find is a lot of people ask is uh, how do I do this and make it a thing and so there's a lot of um, in, like, I don't know if I could do it in two hours but there's a lot of uh, strategic things you can do to place yourself in a position to turn this as a hobby or something that feels like a dream into something that people pay you to do and that's your career so you know mm -hmm. i figured out how to do that somehow and um i my heart is to be able to give that to as many people as possible because it is the best life if that's what you want it is amazing i can att attest to the fact that my brother lives the best life uh, up on the sunshine coast surfing and making videos and just living it up so yeah <laughs> it is pretty pretty nice so i'm going to go back again to everyone over here um so all of these guys are also presenting at the australian photographic prize in the expo and in that conference so courtney is one of our keynote speakers in the conference thanks to imogen who are a fantastic company creating this AI software that makes it so easy to edit. Um, so she'll share a little bit about that uh, at the conference, obviously. And um, Peter and Bruce are both doing expo stand presentations. Uh, so the expo ha is happening at 3.30 to 5.30 every day. Bruce, we've got on Thursday afternoon and you're doing something on creative lighting. Actually, Bruce, maybe just mention what that is and what you're sort of hoping to demonstrate. Um, I think what I'm trying to get people to think about when using a strobe, every, a lot of people just have strobes, but how to go from just using it as the generic whatever, I just put it up and let it go, to thinking a bit more interestingly about it. Not only your strobe, but your, cam your camera and how to mix and match and play with the natural light and whatever else is out there and have some fun with it. like. Nothing is set in stone. You can have some, you know, you can do some really crazy stuff with it, even if you dive into those menus and you never look at. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we all know, well, anyone that knows, knows Bruce's work knows that he has some incredibly creative pieces. Uh, and if you don't know his work, go to our Instagram, go to our Facebook page. We've posted some examples up there that is, um, that's going to really inspire you to be creative and get really, really creative. Um, Peter, what will you be sharing on the stage? That This will be Saturday afternoon uh, at 3.30 in the Expo Playground. Uh, well, well, sorry. Nope. I clicked I'm not sharing that. that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually sharing, sharing a bit on the back. It's, I'm working <laughs> on that project right now. It's going to come out pretty soon. But this is the key. It's like it all connects into that. So in this documentary, For Bliss and Esso, uh, which the trailer is for, uh, I've done a lot of interview shots in that. And so for the last probably six or seven years, I've predominantly done a lot of interviews. Um, and so what I've figured out, and like a lot of the time I've just been traveling with a backpack around America and you rock up to someone's house and you've got literally 10 minutes to film something um, and then you got to go to the next one. So uh, I'm teaching people how to create a Hollywood look or just a beautiful look in every style of interview situation. Uh, with the least amount of gear as possible. So we got a little bit of stuff uh, to shoot with, some lights uh, that are creative, but I want to show you how to do it very simply and get a really nice result every time. Because it's like in my experience, there's no such thing as like a perfect uh, shoot. You might only get one small opportunity to get something and you got to be ready. So that's where I'm coming from. Yeah, awesome. And pe people will be able to actually shoot while you guys are shooting. So during the expo, it's like you can grab a camera so you can borrow one of the Nikons off the Nikon stand and you can jump in and actually shoot video, do whatever you want um, to experience what's happening as well. No, they can't do that. Well, they could probably take photos of you, Courtney, while you're presenting, but it's uh, probably not the key. But um, can you sh just quickly, before we talk about the um, awards, just share also uh, a little bit about what you're planning to talk at at the conference? Yeah, for sure. Um, from my talk will be about, um, it's going to be kind of like an introduction to filming families, um, what that actually is, what that entails, what that looks like, um, how to turn that into a business, whether it's something that you add into the side of your photography business, um, or whether it's something that you decide to eventually shift into the primary focus of your business. Um, part of my talk is going to be about really just focusing on what it is that you are the most passionate about making sure that you are working really efficiently so that you have time to do the things that are you're the most passionate about. Um, whether that's, you know, family time, filmmaking, learning something new, exploring, um, being creative, things like that. And so, um, it's going to be, you know, uh, a, a really good talk for anyone who has thought about adding video into their business. Um, and is or anyone who's been adding video into their business and just wants to hear more about it. Um, so it'll be a, a good talk, hopefully. Yeah, fantastic. It, it will be, and I, I know so many, I'm always trying to encourage people to actually take that step because it's incredible when you can add video into your business, however it is, uh, it just takes you to the next level. Uh, and so just so people know to the early bird price for conference is finishing today. So please make sure you jump onto the website and get that so you can get the discount um, so that you can uh, jump in to the conference at a better price. Now we are coming back into the full screen of everyone now and uh, we're going to have a little bit of a chat between ourselves about what you guys are looking for as a judge in the entries um, and, and maybe some suggestions for people. But let's start with that. What is it that you're looking for individually um, when, when those videos? And, and just to highlight this, these are live judged. So you guys will hear what's being said. It will be broadcast and streamed as well as in person. So the opportunity to get feedback is incredible. And it's very rare, I think, for video awards for this to happen. So over to you guys, whoever wants to start, what are you looking for in the winning or in, in, in the entries? I'll go. Um, I'm looking for emotion and story. They could be exclusive 
you could just be emotional or it could be storytelling it just works but and i'm not looking for hugely great technique if it's if it's good technique even better if you know how to use your stuff great but first and foremost it's gotta it's gotta you know move and make you feel like feel something or give you that bit of information that just goes oh, i want to know more or that was a great little story or that was a great little thing yeah yeah it's it's all nice to put some pretty pictures together but you yeah you need to get people um in the heart or in the mind one or one both at the same time that'd be awesome yeah yeah awesome yeah so true so true Peter John, what are you looking for? Well, I can't copy Bruce, but that's exactly what I'm looking for every time. <laughs> um, but so I'm going on the vibe of like vibe. Uh, it's I'm looking for vibe. I'm always looking for vibe. So even if you're like a true beginner and you're just starting out, you've only got an iPhone. Um, if you can put something together in 60 seconds and it has a vibe, it feels mm-hmm. something, you can feel something from it, use some music, and put something together, then then I'm going to be more interested in that, and that's what I'm looking for. So, uh, anyone that's out there that's scared of putting something in or or not sure what they can do, and they've maybe um, played around with some video before, um, I'm looking for you to actually put something out and and send it to the world, because you never know. You just could have that flare that just pops and someone picks it up. So. cool hopefully i'm hoping this is inspiring people watching that they're just like yep yep i'm gonna enter i'm gonna enter courtney what are you looking for yeah it's really hard to change from what you guys said um but (laughs) the same thing um except i would probably add to that creativity so um you know definitely like storytelling is huge emotion is huge something that's um impactful i really liked what bruce said about it leaving me wanting more um that's that's what i'm gonna be looking for if it's something that i'd really like to uh see more of that i want to know more about that or um you know something that just makes me want more um but then that creativity side of it as well like just think think outside the box something a bit different um yeah i would say that's probably it that's what i'm looking for you guys are inspiring people. I'm seeing the comments come through. They're getting excited about this, which is what we Good. want. We want to see um, some excitement. Uh, th- this is an incredible opportunity for people um, that, yeah, just really hasn't happened for such a very long time. So, mm. what what else do, do people need to know? Like in in terms of they're submitting something, can they mm. submit it off their phone or can they submit, is is there any sort of requirement that, you know, they need to adhere to in terms of the technicality, audio, video, what sort of things, What are, what's important and maybe what's not quite as important? More than one frame, <laughs> like a moving image, you know. Yes, <laughs> that is key. What about Otherwise, that Justin Timberlake awards. video, though, like the music video from Justin Timberlake, where it was all one shot. That was incredible. Oh, it not a one up. One If you can do a one up, that's great. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's only 60 amazing. seconds. <laughs> um, yeah. I think, yeah, you just, uh, it can be from anything. Uh, um, you know, you find through to your, if you're using a massive Ari Alexa or weapon or whatever doesn't matter it's about putting something in and it can be like your iphone or your android or you know your nikon cool pics um obviously just have some fun and try something because uh, as pete said like want to see want to see the creativity want to see you the tech is only part of the equation and you know you need it but you don't need to be the best in the best in the world yeah I pop, i'll pipe in and um say that uh when i when I got kickstarted into my career in 2010, uh, I just got a 7D for the first time. They just came out and I wanted to shoot something different. So I got, uh, I got together with a local small um, folk band called the Paper Kites and we created this little video together and that, that band probably only had 100 to 1,000 fans at that time. And I was, I've never used like manual lenses or like 
had depth of field or anything like that. I was experimenting, asking my sister actually, Karen, how to <laughs> what are all these settings for camera stuff. And so uh, I was new. I had no idea what I was doing, uh, but I wanted to make something cool. And uh, we uploaded that to YouTube. It's it was only in 360p resolution. So you know, I shoot in high resolution, high quality red cameras, and have been for a while. But this is what kickstarted it for me. It got shared around, and then some famous people found it and shared it around and um, it's sitting on 27 million views and it's like my biggest video to date and there was no reason to make that video except I wanted to make something an experiment and maybe show my flair to a small part of the world and it got to a big part of the world and it changed my life so that's why I want to encourage anyone to make something and just put it out there anything yes that is very inspirational I've talked to people that are thinking about entering and I think it's that, that barrier is, but what do I do? Um, like what, what should they be entering? I mean, the, the, obviously we've, we've made this quite a wide, um, there's no theme, there's, there's no particular genre that you have to stick to. You can enter anything as long as it's moving. You can enter a cinemagraph. But what is it that people should enter Maybe go to Courtney on this. Um, I would say when you're thinking about creating something for this or whether you're thinking about entering something that you've already created, choose something that you are passionate about. If you are thinking right now, okay, I'm going to make something specifically for this award, then really sit down and work through that idea in your mind, start jotting down some some um, things that you would want to do, want to film, and just have it be something that you're really passionate about, something that really matters to you. Um, because I find that that's the kind of thing that helps me get through something that is a, is a what might feel like a difficult or overwhelming task. Um, and so I, I would just say, Put it, put out whatever it is that is matters to you, that is meaningful, is important to you, um, and I think that it's that's gonna be something that comes through. And just like what Pete was saying earlier about the that video that he was talking about, it's something that he wanted to do that was for him, that was like really purely creatively for him. That's what I think I would really lean into when you're deciding what to enter. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. I, I, I think that, you know, that that's the key obviously is find what it is that you're passionate about. Um, what, what can people do though? There, there's so many options in terms of audio, in terms of what you can put in there. Is there a limit on what you're allowed to, to put together? Like let, let's actually talk about legal things right now <laughs> can uh, you make a video <laughs> with someone else's music <laughs> uh, my head in. was going in a totally different <laughs> direction no no <laughs> uh, uh, yeah no uh, unless it's like a band local band you've got permission from and you've got all legalities and stuff yeah don't, don't get the Bliss and SO track <laughs> just to throw it there <laughs> no um that you can get um, there's a lot of royalty free music out there yeah. you can get it for very cheap um, like premium beat or um, mm -hmm. there's a lot of subscription services out there probably if you're only doing it for this don't go that route but there's also like um, there's some YouTube uh, like YouTube there were a list of uh, royalty free music which is safe for their platform and that may not be to your liking but you know you don't want to pay for something which you're only going to use for the one off um, but yeah, go, go looking for the sites. There's so many options these days um, to cover your butt. And, um, and a lot of it is really good these days, like top notch. Yes, uh, bonus points for me. If you find a local artist you can collab with uh, because uh, you both win. If you make a really cool video and the local artist has a track in it, people might go, well, what's that track? And then vice versa. So for me, it's like, if you can find the local people to collab with and help each other grow, best. Yeah, it's certainly something that you've you've done a lot of, Pete. Um, and 
it, it's definitely doable. So keep an eye out for that. If you're when you're entering, if you have actually worked with some other people on it, like there, there's been more than just you creating, it is advised to actually list out the the different people that have been involved because it's a group project. Um, so that that is something to keep in mind. You do want to acknowledge other people's work. Um, but what what about audio quality? I, I mean, we've talked about using any type of camera any type of, you know, it can be a phone or whatever it is. How important is audio quality and the sound that you're hearing in terms of your judging and what you decide? Uh, it's more important than the video itself if you've got the voice. I same thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad we're yeah. all on the same page. That makes <laughs> life so much easier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if, you, if your audio is not clear and it's dirty and noisy, then people will just drop off. So... Uh, as judges, we have to do the right thing and say, look, yeah, you got it. You didn't quite get it. You were close. We didn't quite get it. It's not going to actually make it in the real world. So, yeah, you gotta got to have that pretty spot on. So whether you get a lapel mic or a shotgun mic or you film something or you do a voiceover, like I've actually had voiceovers done from an iPhone and put in a proper production and no one knew uh, because it was done in a place where it sounded quiet and it was dead and it worked. So you can get great stuff just by literally holding your mm. mic there. So you don't need heaps of stuff to do it. Yeah, yeah, like if you're doing that on your iPhone, you can just sit in your closet, like surrounded by clothes, and that really helps just acoustically get a good get a good audio um, clip on your phone. Mm. Yeah. But if you're interviewing people, make sure you lapel them mm. or put a shotgun mic on. And if you don't know what they are, then uh, call me later, um, and then I'll pass. I'll <laughs> well, pass Karen's I, number on to you. <laughs> I was going to say, reach out to our sponsors, KL Australia, and they will help you out with some gear. <laughs> um, yep. So yeah, they're, they're, they've got they've got a, a bunch of different things that you can use. Um, but yeah, the, and and if you're wanting to go down that path, I think as we've said, audio is really really important. I was looking around my desk because they're usually sitting around, but yeah, just the little road wireless goes uh, what I use, and um, they are fantastic for everything. There you go, Bruce has got a few there. Just uh, yep. make sure you take it off the person at the end. <laughs> oh, you got white ones. Yeah, that's different. Yeah, the new okay. white ones are pretty cool. It goes, yeah. and then here's what not to do with cables. <laughs> Don't even get me started if I turn this camera around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, um, so KL sell those uh, Rode Wireless Go, so you can uh, grab a few off them and then you, you, you're sorted. Um, but, yeah, that that's this has been fantastic. I don't know if there are any questions. So if there's any questions at all, specific questions, just um, pop them up and I, and I will let people know. Um, oh, Lee Herbert says no more than... 1800 frames right uh smart ass. count someone counted <laughs> right. someone we'll call can. you later lee <laughs> <laughs> um I, I think i think the main thing to know is just have a go get in there play you know while that while the audio thing we just said is obviously a part of it don't let that stop you like yeah. we want people to have a go and even if this is your first go you got to start somewhere, as Pete said, and you might find the spark. You might go, I really like this. And then you can go and move into the world of video and enjoy what the three of us do on a, on a very regular basis. Yep, definitely. Too regular. <laughs> yeah, every day. <laughs> we have a question from Lee. Actually. Ooh. <laughs> I popped it up on the screen. Can we enter more than one entry? Yes. Yes, you can. It's actually unlimited. Now, that being said, I will precursor this. If we get too many entries, we will prejudge and we will be judging the finalists live. Uh, so just keep that in mind because we have a set amount of time that these guys have to judge for and we can't have them judging for three days straight because they have other things that they need to be doing. And 60 seconds for each entry will start to add up. So yes, yes, Lee, you can enter as many as you want um, and we will get down to some pre-judging should we need to do that. Just pick your best, maybe 50 or 60. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. No, we, we don't mind. We don't mind. 
<laughs> well, you know, what, what's a five minute video? It's five entries. So if you just know, we don't encourage that. <laughs> um, but even if you've got pre rendered work, like if you've got a five minute video and you can cut it down to 60 yeah. seconds, do that. You know, yeah. get back in the edit bay. Absolutely. Yeah. We've got a question from Kat Ferguson. Should entries be non-identifiable? Well, so I'll, I'll maybe answer that. Yeah, I'll answer that first. So technically, we're not going to disqualify anything that is identifiable. Um, but keep in mind that that may swing the judges if they know who you are. Just It, it can get a little bit tricky. It, you're not disqualified, though. So don't put anything obvious in. You know, don't put, a, don't put a watermark in to say it's yours. But, you know, should you be wearing something like this where you're, like, got a logo on your top and that just happened to be in the video? Oh, do you like A my film by Kat Ferguson. Yeah. Then, <laughs> the front. then yeah, yeah. Well, that, that is okay. It is allowed. Um, but just, yeah, it just comes down to the judging. That probably answers that question. Yeah, are there any other questions? Okay. Not at this stage. So I think we're pretty much drawing to a close. I really appreciate your time, guys. Um, we can't wait to see all of this work that everyone's getting all inspired about right now. Uh, the closing date for entries is the 28th of August. So the video awards actually have an extra week than the print and the Nikon Digital Awards and the ASO Awards. So the, not to confuse you all, but the video awards, you have an extra week. So August the 28th, but don't get it in at the last minute, please. Try and get it in at, at least a day before, just in case of technical problems, especially when you're uploading a video to a drive, you know, you, you might just have problems. So try and get that in a bit earlier. What happens is when you enter, um, you put in your details, then you get sent a, uh, an upload link where you then upload your file um, as per the instructions. So it is a two-step process. Don't just enter and then forget to actually enter your video because we need something to judge. So make sure you do that. Um, so thank you, Megan says, thanks so much. Very informative. Hope to see your entry, Megan. Thanks for watching. Um, yeah, any final words from our incredible judges? I can't wait to come and hang out with everyone and have fun. Yeah. Same. In the, in the immortal words of uh, Shia LaBeouf, just do it. Do it now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it first here. Do it now. All right, guys. We're going to sign off. Thank you very much, everyone. Enter the awards. Bye. Bye. All.